All right, my Bible in 365, brothers and sisters, we have arrived at the book of 1 Samuel. And folks, I got to tell you something. I absolutely love this book. Now, let me just say something very important about this. I actually think that 1 Samuel should actually be labeled 1 Kings. And I think that 2 Samuel should be labeled 2 Kings and 1 Kings should be labeled 3 Kings and 2 Kings should be labeled 4 Kings. Sound confusing enough? <laughs> well, 1 Chronicles should probably be labeled 5 Kings and 2 Chronicles should be labeled 6 Kings if you really think about it because we are talking about the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah. Now it is interesting because the reason why we put Chronicles, 1 Chronicles and 2 Chronicles is because 1 and 2 Chronicles actually does chronicle the kings of Judah. When we talk about 1 and 2 Samuel and potentially 1 and 2 Kings, we actually see the chronicling of King Saul, King David, and we also see the chronicling of the judges in 1 and 2 Kings. And of course, what is very interesting, oh, by the way, let me say this. Only a few judges are chronicled in 1 Samuel, uh, which is really important. And I think that should be said. Uh, and then when we move on, we kind of deal with uh, some changes. Now, with all that confusion, let's get right into it because it is a very interesting set of books. Now, I want to just simply say this. Talmudic tradition actually tells us that Samuel was indeed the author of 1st and 2nd Samuel. Now, that's a very difficult thing to be able to prove, and it's actually easy to kind of make go away because 1st Samuel 25 tells us about the death of Samuel. So if Samuel died in 1st Samuel 25, well, then we have a problem because who wrote 2nd Samuel? You see, now, who wrote Samuel? We don't completely know. It is very interesting because we struggle with this issue as it relates to 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, and 1st and 2nd Chronicles. But what we do know is that the Lord himself used somebody to author it, and the way that it was authored is absolutely phenomenal, and the way it was written is actually pretty Awesome. By the way, I want to say this. The time that 1 Samuel was written, and we can say this with reasonable confidence, was roughly before Samuel's death in 1015 BC. So the addition regarding Samuel's death in 1 Samuel may have been made by somebody else if Samuel indeed did write 1 Samuel. And that's a lot to hear all in one description. But let's move on because it is interesting when we start discussing some of the issues related to 1 Samuel. One thing we should note is 1 Samuel describes to us the transition of leadership in Israel as a unified nation between the judges onto the kings. Now, if you remember, God was the one who actually ruled Israel, okay? God was the first king of Israel, and he had been the one who had always ruled Israel. That's why it was called a theocracy. But the people did not want God as their king. And if you think about it, while God was their king, that's when the judges ruled and did what they did. The judges would be spoken to oftentimes by the prophets, and they did exactly what God told them to do because God was the one who, in essence, ruled the nation of Israel. Now, what ends up happening is the nation of Israel grows in prominence, especially after we get to the last judge, which, of course, is Samuel. And the nation of Israel no longer wants God as their king because they want to be like the rest of the world, which is a really, really dumb mistake. So we actually see these transitions being given to us in 1 Samuel. We go from Eli to Samuel. Then we go from Samuel to Saul. Then we go from Saul to David, right? And those are, those are some very important transitions that we need to look at. And it also is important to note that Samuel being the last judge that we see recorded in the Bible... Saul becomes the first human king, and David, who is, of course, the one who is elected to be king or will be king, we begin to see him prominent more when we get into 2 Samuel. So there's a lot here that is being spoken of, and there are some also really interesting, powerful facts, like perhaps one of my most favorite parts of the book of 1 Samuel is when Hannah, Samuel's mom, is praying that God give her a son. And one of my favorite things to do and has always been my favorite thing to do is to read the Bible to my children while praying for them at night and, of course, in the morning. 
And the second story I had ever told my daughter was the story of Hannah. Why? Because it was so important for me to tell my daughter that just like Hannah, we prayed to the Lord that he would give us a precious child. And he did. He abundantly answered our prayers and gave us our three amazing children. And I think it's such a blessing to know that. And it's awesome because when God gave Hannah Samuel, right, understand this, we know it, we need to recognize it. He was dedicated for the service of God, just as Hannah promised. And it is absolutely really, really important. By the way, I should note this, and I think it is really, really important. Samuel is not only the last judge of Israel, he in essence becomes the first notable prophet. Now, we assume that there were many prophets that spoke to the judges prior uh, but Samuel was, in essence, the first person who was recognized as a prophet of God uh, in that time. And then we saw many come after him, which is very, very important. And his work began right after Eli, uh, was, who was a judge, also uh, a priest, dies. So some really interesting things to note there. Also, there's a lot you can learn about all kinds of things when it relates to not only preserving your nation, in the name of God and doing the things that you need to be doing and serving with serving God and loving him. And it also gives us some great insight in what it means to walk in devotion to God, right? We learn a lot about prayer. We learn a lot about seeking God and putting him first. We learn a lot about the miraculous hand of God. We learn a lot about what actually happens when you choose to do things in a way that God never prescribed and how dangerous things can become. And so many other lessons we gain in 1 Samuel, but perhaps the most powerful of all of those lessons is trust in the Lord with all of your heart and understand great rewards will come. You deny the Lord your God, then I can tell you this, as you see demonstrated in the book of Samuel, you will find destruction in your path. Powerful stuff here. I want to encourage you to get into it. It's going to be great. My favorite part, by the way, of 1 Samuel centers around two specific areas. One, of course, as I shared before, the story of Hannah, and the other one undoubtedly deals with the beginning that we read concerning the life of David as he is introduced to us, and some of the things that we learn about how God looks at our heart as opposed to our outward characteristics. It's great stuff. You don't want to miss out on this one. It's going to be good. Study this one hard, because there's a lot of good content in the midst of all of it. God bless you guys. We love you. Keep fighting the good fight.